Kate Jackson, we are back for episode four. Four? It's amazing. We've made it to four. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can keep doing this. It's just whether or not anybody else cares. But we okay. care, and that's why we're doing it. Yes. Plus, plus, you know, you got a bigger beard every time. So it's good. This is a good tracking site. That's us. right. This yeah. will get shaved the day I can step foot in this place. That is my, my goal. Um, so, yeah. So today we are going to talk about failure, the big F word, uh, not the four letter one, but the multi-letter one. I don't know how many, is it seven, seven layers, letters in failure. Um, and it came as an inspiration from, and I'm going to butcher her last name and I apologize, but uh, a woman named Bernadette Jiwa, J-I-W-A. Bernadette, if you're watching, I apologize, send me an email. I know you're not watching, but maybe let me know how to pronounce your last name. But she's a brilliant um, and she kind of tells herself as being a storytelling advisor, a story skills trainer, a best-selling author, author. She says she empowers people, organizations, and communities to create the impact they want by becoming better storytellers. And she sends out, kind of like Seth Godin does, just these brilliant, you know, paragraph thoughts that you're just like, how do you come up with these things on a daily basis? It's amazing. And this one, and I'll read this, the second half of it, and I'll link it, the whole thing, into our, our, our blog uh, notes. But she talks about mistakes um, are not failings. They, she says that um, they're data that, that we can learn from, that every failure inches us closer to progress. And this last part that really is what hit home to me is she says, a wrong turn is simply a sign that you're still on the journey. And that, to me, was like, Oh, that last sentence just says it all because so often, right? I mean, I can think of my own times, the people that I work with, music and or fitness and health that just don't take any action for that fear of failure. And I love the fact of that wrong turn simply is a sign that you're still on the journey. So let's, let's have some fun with that today. I love that quote. I, I, um, I, you know, I think we have this perception that we're, we're always supposed to be on a path of going up, 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 up. And uh, really, in reality, it's like, you know, back, circle, circle around again, go forward, go back. Um, and, and to be able to feel like that is part of, part of the journey and actually a really helpful part of the journey that, you know, if we're just successful 24 seven, we're actually missing a lot of really great information and learning about ourselves that, you know, if somebody's successful in some way, so much of their life when they do have a failure because failure is inevitable it's just part of the human experience and the condition um, they may fall a lot harder because they haven't had the opportunity to learn from small failures or big failures in the past and that's really all that um is, it's just also important for our, our self-awareness our self-development and again what we've spoken about before resiliency I, a good friend of mine, a coach, you know, always uses the phrase that failure is just simply feedback. And I, re, I love, love that. It's sort of in the same vein of what we're discussing. I, I was also referencing that I, you know, from my own perspective, and I can, I've seen it in myself relative to like a musical environment for sure, um, where my inaction or my fear of failure isn't necessary. Like if I was in a bubble of myself, like I wouldn't, I'd step into whatever I need to, but it's the external reflection of that failure through the people around you, friends, family, whatever. It's that reflection of your failure that makes, makes me just, you know, would make somebody just be like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And I, I think that's so interesting because I would say that for those of us, and the loving people that are around us, that the last thing they would do is monopolize that and, and reflect it in anything other than a support system. Yes, I, I think that's, you know, that, that totally speaks to this narrative that we have in our minds that, that we have built over time. And there's a great book called The Four Agreements, and it's these, all these agreements that we have made over time based on our experiences. And some of those agreements are I believe that if I do this wrong, this person will think I'm a failure. And so we just, we allow those to live in our heads and they um, probably don't, they're, they're most likely not true. Um, but we've, we've created this narrative in our heads to believe that's true. So uh, I had somebody tell me once that even inactivity is a choice. Mm. And I, it kind of stopped me in my tracks when I heard it because I was like, 
wow, I, I didn't, I've never thought about it that way that, that I'm, I've been so afraid to move forward for fear of failure, but I'm actually still choosing that route. It doesn't feel like a choice because, you know, really what I'm trying to do is protect myself from, from failing. Um, but if I, if I choose to not move forward, if I choose to protect myself from failing, that's still a choice ultimately. And you're choosing not to move forward. So it's this, this back and forth that we're, I think we're, we all need to play of mm. what am I choosing? What's, what is the choice that I've just made by not trying this or by, you know, stopping myself from doing something because I fear the failure or I feel fear what other people are going to think of me. Wow, that is so good. That actually, like you just gave me a therapeutic moment right there. (laughs) Well, because I won't go into the specific because it's a long exchange, but like I just had a business conversation recently with sort of another professional and and the perception of, and it was sort of reflected to me that if I wasn't willing to take immediate action, you know, like then I'm, and it's like, well, no, like I want to, I, the type of person I am is I'm a person that takes deliberate action. That's always been the way, like if, if I'm half, if I have to jump, if I have to leap, I'm going to jump or leap. Okay. But even that, like you said, it's a choice, but I think what you said was so important because it, it's helpful to remind people. And you just reminded me that it's okay, that to not take, not doing something actually can be just as much of a learning process and it might be the right choice as doing something. I mean, there could be a professional outcome that if you didn't, if you didn't have some filters and maybe not taking, not doing something might not put you in a situation or show some failings that could actually have negative repercussions. That maybe it's more of an intelligent calculated approach to be a little bit more methodical or to wait and be a little more patient. That's, that's, holy cow, I'm holding on to that. (laughs) We forget that, that again, er like everything we do has creates a response of some sort and some of it is intentional and some of it's not intentional and it's all you know we're constantly having to make micro decisions all throughout the day and sometimes we have to make big decisions and if we are constantly in this narrative of fear of failure um, we are really holding ourselves back from any sort of well-being because we're not Number one, we're, we talk this. We talk about this pretty much every session of having compassion for ourselves. The compassion that we we may mess up, but when we when we get murky and things aren't working as intended, there's so much juicy learning in that. And so to not be afraid of that every single time, it's yeah, it's uncomfortable. Absolutely, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's definitely not where we want to be. But again, it's that um, there's this whole notion of post-traumatic growth out there. Like when you go through something major, how do you come out the other end? Do you sink? Or do you look at it and go, what can I learn from this situation? So when I go through what I perceive as failures, I don't think of them as failures. I, you know, like um, the, the woman you mentioned, I think about it as information. It's like, okay, what, what am I going to take from this? What have I learned from this? What can I learn from this? So that this is done differently the next time and I improve myself going forward. And it feels really good. That's such an intentional choice to me. And it, it lightens that fear of failure and it lightens the, the muck that I might be in at that moment. There's going to be a new hashtag trending hashtag juicy learning. (laughs) (laughs) I heard everything you said, but that, that stuck with me for a second. Um, Well, it's so true. And I, I think, um, like I can think about how I have many times over, and I will admit that within the fitness realm, you know, within my world, um, I need people to experience failure. But it, but where you know, and obviously it's varying degrees of it. Um, but I can think about multiple times, basically any opportunity I have working with any client, that there's a very thoughtful journey that we sort of weave through that allows them to eventually ex- get exposed to failure it's such a strong word but, but that from that it's just a learning opportunity it's an opportunity to you know it's like it's it's purposeful but it's also calculated and it's important because it's important for them as a to become aware of what 
like we can talk about how to do everything right. And I'm going to always start somebody out by teaching you how the best we can to do something right. But to, to train the organism, to, to challenge the organism appropriately, there is a point where we need to expose ourselves to that very sort of scalpeled edge of failure because at that point, the organism is not going to adapt and get better. If we always stay safe and small and 100% perfect. I always joke that perfect is sort of the trap that at some point, if every rep is perfect, it's too light. It's too easy. We need to, but you can't set somebody up day one for that, or you'll never see them again. Um, so I can think of multiple stories with different people where there's been a very calculated timeline. Sometimes it's six months, maybe it's a year's journey for some, it could be two weeks and it's all relative to that one-on-one -on -one relationship to know how it'll best serve them and when they're going to be ready to receive that information. Yeah, I think that's the key too, is that, that being ready to receive because everyone's on their own path and they're, they're, everyone is open to recept, receptivity on this is not where you're at yet and there needs to be some more work towards that and um, really allowing safe space for people to feel vulnerable and feel safe to not do it maybe the way that they want to or as fast as they want to, but to give them encouragement that, you know, you're still going to get there. You're still going to learn a lot in this process. And frankly, whatever it is that you're putting out there that you think it should look like, you may end up in a completely different place and be really grateful for it. And it might actually be better. So, so again, just that retaining that open mind too, for what happens along the journey that can actually bring you to a place that you may never have even been able to imagine because you had this set ideal of what failure looks like and what success looks like when in reality there's a whole bunch of gray in between there that might might work better for you there are there are times and it makes me think of you know some of these statements that you always hear you know the the those that have those with waning years that look back on their life and and again this isn't like my, one of my biggest takeaways from our conversation here is not only obviously the concept we're trying to share, which is, you know, failure is feedback and it can be a very positive thing in staying on the journey, but you know, it's calculated, it's thoughtful and that even inaction or chosen inaction can be just as productive. Um, but I think we can all sort of want for our folks, for ourselves, for the people that are listening, for, for everyone around us to, to live a life that we look back and, and don't wish we would have done something or tried something mm -hmm. um, because of that. Because I think if we go back to the point that I maybe made earlier where, you know, so much of this head trash can be this perception of what might happen from around me inward, you know, the people around you love you and the, the people, in, you know, and, and you can be calculated and thoughtful of when you expose yourself to these situations and when you step out into an uncomfortable place. Um, but try, right? Try it. Hmm. I like it, Kate. Me too. Me too, Michael. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good place to call our conversation for today. Um, always a pleasure. It's just a treat. I love doing these things with you. Um, and we will be back for episode five here in a little bit. I love it. Thanks, Michael. Uh, take care.